Hi, can everyone hear me? Oh, hi everyone. Oh, okay, seems like we're unmuted today. Hi, happy Wednesday. Uh, today we're gonna do uh, an Initium One Plus demo since we haven't done one in a long time. Uh, this demo will just go over like how we do sample prep here and how we encourage all our customers, uh, like current and future customers to perform their sample prep uh, and just things to check for before uh, starting that process. Um, and we're also going to show some new features of our soon to be released updated software, which includes some tutorials. So we're gonna go over that as well today. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna peek in front of the camera. I don't know if you're going to see me, but if you're going to see my hands and part of me. So before we start doing uh, any sort of sample running on the instrument, one thing that we like to do here is just to check how the instrument looks. Um, we like to check our solvent bottles, which we have over here. Um, as you can see, our solvent bottles are pretty filled, so I'm not going to need to put any more solvent today. Uh, but if you did want to fill them, uh, just in case, we uh, recommend that you take off the gas line first because the bottles might be pressurized. Uh, so when they're pressurized, you'll hear some sort of hissing. Uh, so you wanna wait for the hissing to stop before. Uh, uh, sorry, we're trying to see if our audio is working or not. I wonder if I don't have it on the pushing. Can you try moving moving on the pushing? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if anyone can hear me, but we're just checking our audio before we continue. I may continue because I think oh, is it on the slope? It is. Maybe. Uh, it's working. Okay. Sorry if you couldn't hear us. Um, seems like we have some technical difficulties with the audio today. Um, so I'll go through my little spiel again. So happy Wednesday. I hope you're all having a good day. Um, today we're going to go through the uh, a demo of our Initium One Plus. Uh, we're going to go over some things that we recommend and encourage all our current and new users to do when they have the instrument. This won't go over any maintenance. We did do uh, some preventative maintenance style webinar uh, earlier this year, I believe it was in March, um, or like sometime earlier in the spring, late winter. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to check out that video. Because uh, some of the things I covered more, or we covered more in depth in that video, we'll kind of just like go over very quickly today as things get your check. Um, and also today we will be showing our soon to be released updated initiative software, which includes some tutorials, and we're gonna cover that as well today. Um, and also feel free to add questions, ask questions. Uh, we will get to your questions at the end of the demo. All right. Um, so I'm not sure how much everyone heard previously, so I'm just gonna start from the beginning again. Um, so before we start doing any sample testing, there's a few things we like to check, um, like visually before we start. Um, for example, like our waste bottles that we have over here, uh, we want to make sure those are filled appropriately. Um, 
also if they're not filled appropriately what you want to do is pick up the gas line which i did earlier uh, i would recommend doing the gas line first because the bottles can sometimes be pressurized uh, so if you take off the liquid line first you will have liquid everywhere and you will be sad because then you have to clean that up uh, before starting the test so we recommend taking the gas line off first um, if your bottle is pressurized there's going to be some hissing uh, so go ahead and wait for the hissing to completely stop before you remove this uh, liquid line to make it add your solvents also i do want to say for all our fittings and things like this that screw in here you want to tighten it so it's just tight enough so like you feel that it's tight and then you turn just a like quarter more and that's it um the bottom of these let me get this fitting out one more time so the bottom of these lines they have this little yellow piece here uh, and if it's over tightened over time, it could swell or break inside here. Um, and you don't want that. And then it will make this line unusable. Um, so just tight enough and like a smidge more. That's good. Uh, another thing you want to make sure you check is your waste bottle. We have our waste bottle down here. Uh, show it for you guys. You want to check it down here. Uh, make sure it's not full. Uh, Another quick thing to check visually is the auto sampler uh, washing port. Um, sometimes, especially if you're doing proteins and you have buffers or your solvents just have something with like a salt in it, um, that can deposit over time. Uh, so it's good to take a look at these and see if there's any like salt deposits or any other deposits on there or just make sure they're clean and free of debris. Um, if they're dirty, go ahead and take a lint free wipe, which if you need. Uh, you can contact your sales person for those. We do provide those here. Um, and go ahead, take your lint-free wipe, and you can spray some like water, if it's salt, um, if it's something else, whatever that deposit is uh, soluble in. And then you can just take the bottom here, these very quickly. All right. And then also, you want to make sure you have your chimp installed. I already went ahead and put one in. Um, and if you want a little more thorough, a uh, way to go through that uh, and how to make sure it's tight and all those things that is also in the preventative maintenance webinar which we did earlier this year so go ahead and check that out uh, so for the sake of time i'm just going to leave this here we have chip and everything um, okay so once all these are done um and i have solvents here that are compatible with my sample um even though i'm not really running today that is what you would like to have uh, something that's compatible with your sample in these bottles uh, i'm going to go ahead and prep my sample so we have water vials here, which you can also uh, contact your salesperson if you need those. Uh, we do have those in house that we can provide for you. And then before I put my sample in, I'm going to spray the cap and the vial with some clean, dry air. So we use these cans. Uh, you do have to order them. I think you normally get them through Amazon or another supplier you can find online. Uh, we also have this uh, one that makes air by itself. So sorry, it's a little loud. Uh, so whatever one you like. This one's a little softer. So I'm just very going to quickly go to spray. That, uh, and this is to make sure there isn't any debris left inside here, like dust, uh, glass, fibers, things like that. Uh, we don't want any of those getting inside our flow channel in the initium uh, because that could damage the chip and it'll also ruin your measurements so you won't get accurate measurements as well. Okay. Next, we're going to use a positive displacement pipette that I have here. Uh, we also started having these in-house, so if you need one or your piece is old or not working properly, feel free again to reach out to your sales representative and they can give private details on how to get that. Uh, we also have the tips in-house. These are the tips that are for this particular pipette. Um, just a quick note, there are different styles of pipette from Kielsen. Uh, that's what this brand is and they're all color coded. So we have another one with a blue, this pocket is blue and the box is blue for those pipette tips. So everything's nice and color coded. Um, to my knowledge, we only have this one in house, this 100 microliter one. Uh, so if there is another size you're interested in, uh, you're going to have to go to their website and 
uh, order that as well. So for today, I'm going to load the full strength or undiluted aquat here that I have in this molar bottle because it's easier to get it out from there. And you want to make sure for these tips, the piston is engaged. There's a little piston inside. Okay, clicking. And then if you see now, this piece moves and it's now engaged. So now we could draw for simple. So I'm just going to pipette 100 microliters here. Right. And then the cap just screws off. Right. And before we put this on our auto sampler rack that we have over here for the 40 fly rack, we're going to centrifuge, centrifuge this vial, excuse me. Because I don't know how well I can get this to see, but there's a tapered part inside this vial, and you can see in the taper there's a big bubble here. Oh, I can't find it. Maybe you can see it. So we don't want to load this up because what's going to happen is the auto sampler is going to come to the vial. It's going to inject the needle. It's going to go all the way to this tapered part. And it's going to suck up these bubbles, uh, and by sucking up these bubbles, um, this is going to create. Um, is not going to give you the best quality data. You're going to see some curves in your transient curves in performance tests. Um, so we uh, are requiring uh, everyone to centrifuge their vial after they put it in the water vial and before they place it on the instrument. Um, and we do have a centrifuge that uh, centrifuges these vials specifically, so you don't have to change anything uh, with your uh, centrifuge that you have in house. Um, we have it over here. I'm just gonna move the camera over. Okay. So this is our centrifuge. We use this in house, um, and we are gonna start recommending all new uh, and current customers to use the centrifuge. Um, if you do not have one, we recommend reaching out to your salesperson as this is like incredible vital for your testing um, to make sure you get the best quality data. Um, so I'm going to put it up. It's a little hard to see. I might use this camera a little bit so we can take a look at some of the stuff inside. But these water vials fit very nicely inside. Very nice and snug. And then also it is a centrifuge, so you don't have a powder to balance. So I have this dummy vial with this red, pretty sure it's water, red water inside. I'm just going to place that in here. And then you have a lot of settings you can change here on the centrifuge depending on what you need. Um, if your sample is sensitive to centri the centrifugal force and, and it could pull out a uh, uh, solution, we recommend using a lower setting uh, depending on what your sample is. But since this sample, I'm not concerned about any of that, I'm just going to run it at this. But um, it's very nice as a touchscreen. You can tap it. Down. Oh, seconds, for example. Start. And this lid also locks, so we can't unless you're very strong and very careful. I'm not going to let it go in the whole 30 seconds in the interest of time. Uh, and also, since we're not actually running this sample today, so I'm just going to stop. And now you get to hear my favorite part of the centrifuge. It kind of sounds like a microwave. It makes it big. Unfortunately, we don't have food in here. It is just the centrifuge files, but those are also nice too. And as you can see, that bubble at the tapered portion is 
now. Uh, this did move up to the top. Uh, so if I were to run this sample, I would actually centrifuge it some more to get these bubbles out. But since we're not actually running this today, I'm going to pretend those aren't there. But you don't want these bubbles in your sample because they can also pull up the bubbles while it's grabbing the sample. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here. And there we are. Now we are ready to go to the software part of this demo and go through some of those things here. So bear with me as I get back to the software. All right. I have confirmation that you can see this from someone watching in-house, so we're going to continue on. So this is our soon-to-be-release uh, Initium software, I believe it's 2.4. Uh, there's a few features that have been kind of updated for ease of use. One of the biggest things that are were added to this version is tutorials. Um, so these are really nice if you're like a newer user, um, or maybe you don't use our instrument all the time like maybe use it once a month and you know we forget things it happens um so we have this nice help button here select it you have all these tutorials here now um which you can go through like there's an faq oh and it takes you to a pdf version of our user manual in the interest of time again i'm not gonna draw that um and I believe all these are also PDF files, like the ones on the top. Uh, these ones are tutorials that'll pop up here, such as this one. So it'll kind of go over some of the things that I verbally explained here, um, like minimum, maximum volumes. Uh, we have the air can here, your experiment, all that stuff. And you can select through them. All that other things that I mentioned. So these are really great if you're not using your instrument frequently. Uh, but you use it like maybe once a month or every few weeks and you just forget and you're like, oh, how did I do this again? You could just go ahead and select any of these tutorials here. Okay, so today I'm going to go over a few other things, uh, what to check before you go ahead and start your sample run, um, as well as go through the diagnostics very quickly to make sure that they're passing. Um, so everything else in the updated version looks the same. So you have all these tabs are here, they still look very similar, your protocols, um, we have our settings tab here. Um, let's go back here. So a few things I want to mention on this tab, uh, just like things to look out for. So we want to check your use counts. Um, you could select that from any time if you have this ribbon down, and it'll tell you. You can see our test syringe piston is kind of nearing like old age, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, so it's probably good to check that. Uh, before you run. Um, also, if you're using certain solvent groups, you can select that here. Solvent group. So right now I have the aqueous uh, group selected. And as you can see here, it tells what's in here. So I have buffer as my primary or first solvent. I have 1% aqua as my secondary or second solvent. And this enhancer, which is acetone, which just helps to dry the channel and remove any other aqueous solutions that are in there. Um, Depending on what type of cleaning you need, you might have other options. Like in-house, we have one with chloroform. So if I select that, it changes the enhancer to chloroform and you could use buffer, aqua, and chloroform. Uh, if you need any cleaning, I'll just make this as a quick note. If you need any kind of customized cleanings, uh, please reach out to us and we will help you with that. We do not recommend uh, users to make their own cleaning uh, just because there's certain steps that need to be followed uh, for the cleaning process that can't be skipped. Um, and all those things. So feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to help you set that up. So I'm gonna switch back to the aqueous. And then you don't have to, oh yeah, hit select. There we go. So the aqueous group is selected. Um, another thing here to check is um, if you didn't visually check your solvent bottles, you can check here. Uh, mine don't show up on the screen because we have a pedestal for our larger solvent bottles. So those cover the weight sensors, so they're not actually touching the weight sensors. Um, but if it was uncovered, there's basically a weight sensor underneath where you would place all your bottles. 
um, and that will tell you, give you like an estimate on how much you have. Um, I still recommend going and visually checking. Um, the sensors do kind of go as time goes on. Um, so, but if you like to have it here, like let's say you replace your solvent bottle or you replace, uh, you added some more liquid to it and you wanted to see what it looked like, you could hit this refresh button. Uh, and if it was touching the weight sensor, it would populate here. All right, so it's service utilities. So a few things to check before you run your sample as well, just to make sure your auto sampler and your test syringe are calibrated. Uh, I'm not gonna go over those today, uh, but if you need help doing that, feel free to reach out to our service team. We'd be more than happy to help you with that. Uh, but these are both very vital to getting the best possible data uh, because if your auto sampler isn't calibrated, um, it won't go, to, like it could not go to the correct vial, um, or if the position's off, maybe you won't reach your sample. Um, these are very important for, especially if you are using low volume, such as 26 microliters or 50, you wanna get as much sample as possible to perform your test. So this is very important to have these things calibrated um, beforehand. And also your test syringe. Your test syringe is very important to have calibrated because if you don't have that piston at the 100 microliter mark, it'll mess up your loaded volume and maybe it'll say you've loaded less even though you loaded more and then it might not retrieve properly and all these other things could arise from that. So, and again, there's more tutorial settings here. So let's say um, you do have the option if you are a frequent user to remove your tutorials, there is a little do not ask button which I will show when we go through one of them. Um, but if you know, you're like, oh, I want that to pop up because I don't use it and you accidentally hit it, you can do it here the tutorial settings and you can reset all your tutorials. So as it says in the box here, it means they'll all pop up again when you go into certain tabs. All right, um, so I was gonna cover diagnostics, um, but that was also covered more thoroughly in our preventative maintenance webinar, which we did earlier this year. So please feel free to check that out. Uh, the diagnostics are done for you before you run, but if you're curious to see what they look like, you can go ahead and select this testing. Um, I'll very quickly go through them. So this one, it'll check the chip sensors, um, reference values will populate. And you just wanna make sure they're very similar. Um, if you get reference values that are about 6,000, that means there is an issue with the sensor and it doesn't work anymore. Um, and then go ahead and, well, if you do see that when you're running your diagnosis, uh, go ahead and reach out to us and we can talk to you about replacing your chip. Because um, usually that means the sensor is no longer working. A few other tests we have here, the syringe cell injection port uh, leak test, as well as a solvent bottle leak test. Um, since we are dealing with fluids, it's very important to make sure um, nothing is leaking or else that could also affect your measurement. You can lose sample and it makes a mess. No one likes to clean up a mess. So very important to check this one to make sure the line where the measurement is taking place uh, is leak free. Also the solvent bottle, it checks for leaks there because the bottles need to be at a certain pressure in order to clean properly, depending on your chip configuration. Um, so go ahead, uh, make sure this is running to make sure that that uh, is checked as well. And then just very quickly, these flow tests are to check the health of the chip sensors as well. Uh, when you perform them, you will get a linear line with all four sensors. And it'll also go with some reference values and it'll check to make sure your flow rate is where it should be for your chip. Uh, so these are great to check on your own if you have some time and are curious. But exit out of that. So today I'm also going to go over how to create a level generator protocol. Um, we do have included uh, in the protocols for measurement protocols, we have what we call an automatic mode. Uh, this automatic mode, this is great if you don't know your sample, um, this is the first time running it. Uh, so you could select that. And I will show you ah, to see them uh, have this creating a measurement protocol to pop up. Um, so, so yeah, so for auto mode, it's gonna have a slide about that, but very quickly, um, this is just for when you don't know your sample or you have small volume or you just need one point. Um, this is great to run and just get a feel for your viscosity. It'll try to get the full scale pressure of the chip to about 50%. So that's about 50% of the chip. And it does this because it gets good readings at that percent full scale, um, but I'll cover that a little bit more when we get to the slide. So 
excuse me, in our new version of the software or updated version, we have um, these tutorials that pop up when you click on selected areas in the software. Um, so one pops up for your measurement protocol here, uh, and I'll just go through all the slides here. Uh, so this one is just informing you when you create your measurement protocol um, for certain things to look out for. Um, for example, you have the option to select your measurement protocol in flow rate or shear rate. If there's just one value you have, like let's say you know you want to run it at a thousand microliters per minute, and you just want to put that in, you select flow rate, it will convert back and forth, just an FYI. So if you have one or the other, uh, but let's say you just have one number already that you know you want to put, you can put that here. Um, the chip type uh, is also highlighted as well. This is important because you can only run on our OnePlus, you could run these measurement protocols with certain chip types. Um, well, not with certain chip types, but you want to select it because maybe this protocol you're making will work for our one chip you have and maybe not for another. Um, so you want to make sure you select which chip type it is or it won't come up when you go back to the experiment tab. Other things we have here, if you want to perform sample retrieval, excuse me, you're going to use, select that and by using the reservoir and then you're going to select a sample retrieval volume. Uh, the software, if you select a sample retrieval volume, that just is, doesn't make sense for your sample. For example, like in this protocol, like let's say I had 26 microliters um, and I only loaded 18 or 19 microliters, um, it won't try to do 25 because there isn't 25 microliters inside the channel. Um, so it'll adjust for that for you and it'll go to oh, whatever the appropriate retrieval volume is for that volume of sample that was loaded. And we also have a wait time after retrieval feature here. So, oh, we don't have that yet. I was not informed of that. I was just told that. No, we have the feature. Okay. It's uh, recommended to leave us. Okay. So, this is a little more of an advanced feature yeah. that also I have Dr. Christian Ochoa with me here in the room. That was his voice floating around. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a more advanced feature. If you think you might need this, please feel free to contact us. Uh, and we can see if that's something you would need for your sample or not. Um, but let's see what else we have here. I think I went through everything. Yes. All right. So this is the automatic mode measurement. This is what it will look like. Um, and you can always make this yourself. Uh, you're just going to go ahead and put zeros here. So zero for priming. Um, so for that way, it'll try to figure out uh, the percent full scale pressure that it needs to run. And then if you click select zero again, it'll also run it at 50% full scale pressure uh, or 25% full scale pressure. Um, and it'll do the repeats here. Um, yeah, make sure you select priming for the first one, just so that first one, it can really figure it out and get a feel for your, the instrument can get a feel for your sample and the, the software can get that feel as well. Um, and you can select whatever temperatures you want over here. Uh, and you can put as many repeats as you'd like for either of these or for any of these columns. Yeah, so for in this example, we have two different temperatures. So let's say you don't, you have a new sample and you want to see what the viscosity looks like at different temperatures, you could do the same thing. So you would add extra rows here and you would just select a different temperature that you'd like. And then it'll go through the same thing where once it, when it primes again, it'll try to find that percent full, that ideal percent full scale pressure um, to run your sample at at that temperature. And then it'll pick that and then it'll do the same to run these repeats here. All right, and this is for if you have, like I mentioned earlier, specific rates you want to run. Uh, this one is in flow rates. The same thing will pop up for shear rate. So if you already know what you want to run, you can always select that in here, and you can put all these like we have in here and whatever temperature you like. Um, and also, you can select zero for priming for any of these as well. If you're not sure what to prime at, so you can just go ahead and hit a zero here, like we have on this slide, and you can select priming for that. And once you have your rates selected, you can go ahead and hit this button I think on the previous slide. So before we selected it, we have this auto here. And what this button does is it'll generate uh, weight and measurement times for you, depending on the shear rates or the flow rates you picked. Um, so in this next slide, for the rates that were selected here, we hit auto and it generated these numbers in here with these times. Uh, this looks like it was for an EO2 chip, just why this pause time is here. Sometimes it might not have a pause time in there, depending on the chip you have. 
um, and it'll also give you an estimated volume needed. And these are nice to use um, depending on how much sample you have and you want to get an idea like, oh, I only have like 26 or 50 microliters, like how much do I need to run? Um, so it's good to check that out here. So you'd be like, oh, I need 20 microliters for my sample. So probably putting only 26 microliters in my vial probably won't work because it'll only pick up about 19 and it might not have enough to do the full measurement. Um, so there's little things like that that you can check beforehand. Um, I know this auto mode will not populate anything because it is automatic. And since it's trying to figure out how much volume it'll need, it's not really sure. So that's why this one has remained zero for all of these, except the temperature. All right, so next we have our level generator feature. So this feature is really nice when you have a sample and you wanna do a full shear rate sweep, um, but you're not really sure what rates to pick. Um, maybe you already did that initial automatic mode and you're like, oh, okay, I have this. I want to see like my capability of what I could run my sample at. Um, or maybe you don't, and maybe you just want to like run your level generator and try different rates and see what it looks like. That's always an option too. So the level generator, it has this nice button here, which you can see in the back over here. So what we have here, and I'm going to go through this again after I have all the slides is it's showing you the screen will pop up when we select the level generator button. Uh, typically for level generator, we recommend doing five to 95% full scale pressure of the chip. This is within not only the calibrated range, but the full range of uh, shear rates and flow rates you can achieve with the chip you have. Um, you can select how many levels you want within this five to 95 range. Uh, this screen that popped up is from the show level um, button here. Next, ah, yes. And you can add temperature and repeats as well. Normally we recommend five repeats. Um, and what's also nice, like you can see here, is you can add the same type of sweep for multiple temperatures as well. So like, let's say you want to repeat this uh, type of range and you want to do like five temperatures or 10 or however many you feel like doing, you could uh, repopulate all these and just change your temperature and your repeats. Oh yeah, and then once you're done, you click append and it'll add it to your measurement. There we go. And this is what it looks like. After. Uh, and here's that little do not show this again button. Uh, if you're someone who like uses this frequently and you kind of already know these things, you can always click do not show and it won't pop up anymore uh, because it will pop up every time you select the measurement tab. Um, and if you feel like, oh, you know, I kind of want that to come, I have newer users, you can always go back to that settings and click reset tutorial. I'm gonna hit okay. So I'm gonna very quickly go through our level generator feature. Ah. So I clicked the level generator and as you can see, it's populated with this new screen. So I'm gonna do something similar to what we had here with 5.95. I want seven levels. If I wanted to see those, this will populate here, select. I'm sorry if that was very, very loud. <laughs> so as you can see, it'll show you what levels it's gonna to try to run your sample at. Okay. Five, and then you put five repeats. And then just like how it showed in the tutorial example, if I wanted to run at multiple temperatures, I would do the same thing, just refill all these. I'm not gonna click that button again, because that was very loud. And 30, five, and like it goes on, right? Like I could do, another one if I'm feeling or if I really want to run my sample at all these temperatures and like like 45 for example okay so once you're done filling all these out uh you can go ahead and hit append there's also this tutorial button here if you happen to like not use this for a while and be like oh how do I do this again you can click on that and it'll go through those level generator slides that I went through a few minutes ago um since we already went through that I'm going to hit append and as you can see down here, it populated with all those runs with those different temperatures that I had added in. Um, and you don't really need these, so you could delete these. All right, so now that we have that, uh, and you wanted to save, so I'm also like, if I was gonna save this, I need to save it for the chip that I have installed, which is a BL5, select that the reservoir, 
46. I'm most likely going to do 90 microliters. And I just keep uh, hit save as new protocol. And you can just type this into whatever kind of nomenclature you have for naming these things. So like for me, if I were to name this, I'm going to put my initials. LG for level generator. And then I like to put the temperatures. What if it's 30 and 40? See? And then I like to pick the rate that I pick. So 5, 95, just something like that. Uh, again, you know, this uh, protocol name is whatever makes sense to you. So if you have like an interesting name for it or just something that remind you of this, uh, like if you're using it for a specific sample, you can put the sample name. This is just how we do it here, uh, but that's totally up to you how you'd like to do that. All right, and with that, uh, that concludes the demo for today. Uh, we're gonna wait and see some of your questions or answer some of your questions and we're gonna wait a few more minutes to make sure uh, if you have any questions, you get them in so we can answer them. It looks like we have a few. Let's see. Okay, so it looks like here these sample these questions might be related. So I'm gonna read this one up top. Uh, when setting measurement protocol with 5C and 25C, is it okay we test the same sample volume with two different temperatures? Will that cause problems, some failure? So we don't foresee any problems with that. We actually really recommend that you use the same sample for all your different temperatures. Um, and you could, as you saw with the level generator or even just any other feature here, you could add your different temperatures as you want and it'll run the same exact sample over and over again um, with whatever you put in here. Uh, and no, it shouldn't cause any failures uh, or anything. Um, I will say viscosity is temperature dependent. So the only difference is that your viscosity will change depending on the temperature. Uh, so you're gonna get a different viscosity value at five as opposed to when you run it at 25. So that's just normal viscosity is dependent on temperature. Um, the only other thing I would say, so our instruments, when you run them below 18 degrees Celsius, uh, we usually uh, have a dry air line supply that goes into the back of the instrument um, with a can of dry air, not a can, I'm sorry, like, I don't know what they're called actually, like where you container. have the container, thank you, the containers of air. Um, so we recommend, so we uh, not recommend, we insist you have that uh, plugged into the back of your instrument and you have this line open to supply air into the electronical components, electronic components of the instrument. Um, because what happens is depending on where you're at, there could be some humidity in the room. And when you go back up to temperature, um, this could cause the humidity to form water droplets and to leak onto the electronics. Um, so if you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to us and we can make sure you have that uh, set up properly. And we could uh, remind you again, when to use it and when not to use it. Um, and even if you have the tray, here, this tray can also go from four to 70 degrees C. When you even have this at 18 or less, we uh, have, we need to make sure that you have the dry air line on. Um, and I think you have a limited sample volume and you're not able to split for two different runs. So, so yeah, so you could set up your run. Um, this was the next question someone was asking what to do if you can't split up your sample and you have a limited volume. So again, you could set up your rate sweep here, or if you know your rates, you could set them here and just put whatever temperatures you like. Um, and you could go ahead and use that same sample. So if you have something like 50 microliters only, um, you load that into the vial, um, you set up your measurement protocol for whatever temperatures you like, and you just go ahead and run it. Um, oh, I did forget to mention, we do have a recovery feature here. Uh, so this was from a previous run that we did earlier today. But if you wanted to recover your sample, that's also an option. Uh, depending on your sample viscosity, you could recover up to about 70% of your sample. Even up to 90%. Oh, even up to 90%, depending yeah. on your sample's viscosity. Mm -hmm. um, so if your sample is very precious, which we know a lot of our customer samples are very, very precious, you can go ahead and hit recover. And 
make sure that you have the recovery vial selected here. Uh, so you can have it go back to the same vial that you put it into, or if you want to put a new one, you just have to go next to it. Just make sure you put whatever vial you want to go back into here. All right, we're going to wait a few more minutes to see if anyone else has any questions. Okay, another one just populated. If the instrument continuously runs for 24 hours, uh, will that cause some instability issue or performance issue? Um, no, we've run, uh, or not myself personally, but Dr. Ochoa has run some tests that took like, what, two days? A day? More than a day. More than a day, yeah. probably less than two days? Probably less than two days. Okay, yeah. so for more than 24 hours and the instrument ran, well mm -hmm. from what i heard from him and he's nodding in agreement with me so yeah there aren't any issues with that um as long as the instrument's just running um so yeah you told you could run it overnight you could run it for a day run it for almost two days if you want um that's not a problem with this instrument i'm gonna wait a few more minutes in case anyone else has any questions Yes, you're welcome. Okay, I'll give you guys one more minute. Also, with the new software upgrade, uh, the preloaded protocols uh, now have descriptions. So you can see descriptions of um, like how much recommended uh, volume you should load, um, uh, what is the maximum viscosity for that protocol, um, as well as a short description of each of those protocols that can come in handy when um, deciding which protocol to use. Uh, so, as you can see, we have a bunch here. I think it's only the preloaded ones so um, let me click on the 26 bo5 that one yeah oh, oh yeah just like that so all these preloaded protocols will have these descriptions so for this protocol you can load uh from 26 up to 150 microliters uh, we recommend pre-preserization if you load more than 50 into the waters vial and this um is also suggesting the loading protocol uh that you should use uh, for this measurement and like i mentioned before you have the short description of this protocol and of course the temperature at which it's going to run yeah and i will also say if you do have any questions in the future that come up about measurement protocols or like cleaning or any of those things or like chip types please feel free to reach out to your salesperson and then your salesperson will direct your questions to us and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have for you. All right, since we showed that feature, I'm going to give you guys one more minute for any remaining burning questions. I'd like to mention one more thing. Um, if you go to the tutorials, you probably noticed before, so that should be here. Uh, we have tutorials for replacing the switch valves, for replacing the VROC chip. So what I like about these is you have schematics um, showing you like what parts to replace, um, how to remove the chip, for example, and it makes it really much simpler to um, service uh, the instrument or replace the, the chips and the parts. All right, since we talked one more time, giving up 30 seconds. Questions? All right, 
I think we will conclude the webinar today, uh, since I don't see any more questions populating in here. Um, thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a good rest of your day. And again, any questions pop up in the future, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help you with any questions you have. Yeah. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you, Greg.